Bally Sports with the one and only J.R. Smith. What's up, brother? I can't complain. What's going on? Nothing, man. You you got you do it all. College student, broadcaster. When do you sleep? Uh, I only sleep like four or five hours a day. I'm too busy to sleep, man. How was your semester? Semester was good. Finals this week. So I uh, got a couple of exams I'm kind of nervous about, but I'm ready. A birdie tells me that during Kyrie Irving's process of coming back when he was still in Brooklyn, you guys were working out and shooting. What was that process like for him, and how did that help him when he went to Dallas? Honestly, I don't know if I helped him. Uh, I think I think just staying in shape helped him a lot. Just you know, uh, stay consistent with his uh, with his cardio and stuff. I think the first game he came back, he had like 30, 33 or something like that. So, I mean, Kai is Kai. He's he's a unbelievable player, person also. Um, and I'm just glad to see him back. You got a movie special on Prime. What made you feel like now was the time? Uh, more than anything, just. The climate of where we at as a people, uh, especially the young black kids, um, young black men, the way where we at with our education. Uh, for me, it's like it's always been I'm quote unquote the people's champ. So many people can relate, and so many people are like okay. Well, to me, I felt like this was the most relatable thing to black men in our community as far as education, and uh, to be able to do that as well as the biggest part for me is set example for my for my daughters and uh, show them that black men can be vulnerable. I think that's uh, I think that's the biggest thing I took away from. Tell me something, the Cavaliers exceeded up to some people. They fell short, but they shined in the regular season. What did you like about Donovan Mitchell and as his fit goals in Cleveland? I mean, I love that he, he really embraced the city more than anything. Uh, Cleveland is a great spot. So many people think of Oh, it's Ohio or it's Cleveland, the weather, so many different things. The, the atmosphere, the people, uh, I mean, playing in that arena, the queue, it's amazing. You know, to see that team from where where I was at when we left to where it's at now, I was really excited to see them be in the playoffs. Jimmy Butler was one of your peers. He's been kicking butt. Are you surprised by how well he's doing? No. Jimmy's a competitor. I've seen Jimmy countless years when he started in Chicago to – a couple years ago in the bubble to now, like his game has always been there, but his motor is what puts him over the top. So many other guys just pass more talent to him, but nobody outworks him. And that's one thing I love about Jimmy. You know, Nas made a song called If I Ruled the World. If you ruled the world for the day and we fast forward the rest of the NBA Finals, who's your prediction? Who's there? I mean, if I ruled it, I would see the Lakers and probably Atlanta. Just because my boy DeJounte. But who I think is going, I think it's going to be Phoenix and probably Miami. I think Miami's the only team that can really beat Boston. So you think Miami's really just just him or, or they're in that in that conversation? Yeah, I th they're definitely in that conversation. It's not just him. They got a great team. Spo is a great coach. Pat, I'm pretty sure that he was going over film with them. So, I mean, they, they in a great situation. And everybody who goes there, and they got UD. UD is like the the triple OG vet that's really going to make sure you work and doing everything you're supposed to do. So I got full confidence in that. And just to piggyback off of that, you talked about just Phoenix and, and what they're doing, but Phoenix, Miami, and Los Angeles, meaning the Lakers, all put a light switch on at some point during the season. Is that hard for a trade in season like that at the deadline to kind of turn that switch on at the right time? I mean, not when you get somebody like KD. Lakers, I think it would have been harder because the pieces that, that goes into the puzzle have to fit perfectly. One thing can be, you know, counterproductive than, than with what, the next. So if you got a guy like... Uh, Rui Hachimura. Yeah, he's getting a certain amount of touches and you go into a new situation with certain expectations. Stuff like that could, could throw it off. But from what I hear from Phil, the new guys that they brought in, Everybody is kind of like, you know, fits in the system. Everybody understands their role and stuff like that. But when you got guys who come in from different situations and have major roles and then you got to diminish or fill a different slot, it can be tough. I know I said I had one more question, but I really have one more question. Russell Westbrook is the king of all the slander. He switched over to the Clippers and did his thing. As a guy yourself who was criticized a lot, do you feel for him? Do you think people just did too much? It's hard to feel bad for somebody who got three hundred million. Not nah, just playing. Nah, just playing. <laughs> you meant that? Nah, no, seriously, because people think money could cure everything. So 
honestly speaking, I mean, I understand what he was going through. Given the passion that he has for the game and then seeing people around you who are quote unquote supposed to be the closest to you and your teammates and organization kind of flip on you and then the fan base. And he's, he's an LA guy, he's from LA. I'm pretty sure he grew up a Lakers fan. So to have that type of experience with your, with your home team and your home city is, is really tough. Fortunately, I'm, I'm happy to see him go to the Clippers and have the success he's had because now he's still able to have some type of reputable space. When it's all said and done, it's all over. When he's not playing anymore, he played at home and went to a better situation than where he was at. Being booed at home is a really tough thing. I got booed at the Garden. I'm from Jersey. So that's, I, I know I understand that, I know that, and it's hard, but at the end of the day, Russ, Russ is a competitor, and I don't really think he pays attention to too much outside noise. If you know the game, you've been around the game, I think he has way more of a respect for it, but uh, if you don't, then I, I don't really think he cares, honestly. Enough said. You the man. Thank you for your time. Yeah, no doubt. Appreciate it.